Today we're starting a new series, and uh, when I'm uh, getting close to, and by close I mean months away from concluding the series that I'm on, I begin to think about what new series that I ought to, to do, and I usually try to think of the situation of our congregation and in the world and those types of things to, to, to match what I believe is needed for us. And um, I thought that it would be good for us to study the, the Gospel of John. And uh, part of the reason is that I believe that while you know we've done recently Hebrews and Job and then a series on not bowing the knee, I think it's good to, to go back to the Gospels. The writings of Paul and others are, are excellent writings and they're good commentaries. But I think we should go back to, to our Lord and hear what he has to say and what he does. And so I think it's, it's profitable for us to do that. And John is oftentimes used for those who are new believers or whatever and, and are recommended for that. And so that was what I had intended to do. It doesn't happen frequently, but it's, it's, it's not a common occurrence that sometimes God's spirit speaks to my spirit. And he um, spoke to me a question that Jesus had said. And it's one of those situations where it's not a common verse that I contemplated or consider. The parable that it comes from, or at, at the end of it, is something that I well know and, and have preached on or whatever. But it's funny, this particular verse is not one of those verses that I studied, think about, contemplate, whatever. It's not like, you know, you shall love one another as I have loved you. It's, it's one of those. And so all of a sudden, this verse, which was not in the forethought of my mind about this, all of a sudden, this verse, the statement that Jesus said, hit me. And so I'm going to throw you a little curve. And even though we're starting the study of the book of John. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 15, because this statement by the Lord that I felt was to me and not pepperoni pizza, that um, it changed my motivation and purpose for going through this study. And so in Luke 15, starting with verse 1, it says, now he, that being Jesus, was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Now the context of this is Jesus had just talked to them and answered their questions about his second coming, about his return to the earth. And he had described a number of things that would be. And so he follows up this discussion of his return with, with what he's going to tell them as a parable saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. Obviously, she was poor because she could have hired a lawyer, a scribe, and, but she kept coming to the judge himself. And for a while he was unwilling, but afterwards he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. So Jesus says, even unrighteous un people who don't care about God's will and don't care about what men think will give in because they're tired of hearing the same thing over and over. And finally, they'll just say, I don't care what's right. I don't care what's wrong. Just don't bother me anymore. So he goes, I, I, I got better things to do with my day than listen to this lady. So I'll just give her what she wants. And so I can live my life. And the Lord said, 
Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night, and will he delay long over them? So I want you to notice when he summed it, he's saying a couple of things. One is that God will bring about justice, and he will not long delay. He didn't say he wouldn't delay. He just said the, the delay would not be long. I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. So he's saying, even though it may appear to take some time, and even though you may think it's being delayed, once it starts, justice will happen rapidly. Now here's the verse, here's the statement that this, his spirit told my spirit. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? when I, that hit me like a ton of bricks. Because you just kind of assume, okay. So I decided, for me personally, that if the Lord delayed, and I was allowed, alive when that happened, and he comes, I want to be the one he finds faith. And in addition to that, I want those people who are in my ministry, whether you're sitting here or watching on various social ministry, to have faith and that faith be here when Jesus comes. And so that the answer would be, so when the men, Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? We can say, yeah, me. You can find me and I'll be here. Now, unfortunately, we parents and church has done a lousy job. Because oftentimes our children will go away to college. And because we've not taught them properly and challenged them and had them think about their faith and the scriptures, that when they go to college and hear all of the contrary, and I won't even call it evidence, Garbage, says the news. They then surrender and give up their faith, whatever that amount was, because obviously their college professors and their friends know more than they did, and therefore, obviously, God's not who God claims. So I want to turn that around. I want us to say, I'm setting my feet. Now, I understand that I have been saved by grace through faith, and that not of myself, it is a gift of God. So my statement here is not, Lord, I'm better than, it's, no, Lord, give me your gift and give it to me in abundance that I might, no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, no matter how far I feel that I'm not getting justice and it's delayed, that I'm going to be here trusting you no matter what. And so the purpose of, of this is for us to go on a journey to find and grow faith. Now, as a sample of this, I want to talk about two movies that are totally different. The first movie I want to talk about is Finding Nemo. little animated movie where Nemo gets lost. And his friend Dora wants to find him. Now, Dora has two major problems. Problem number one, the ocean is a vast place to try to find your friend. And on top of that, the world is even bigger. Now, for us, we're fortunate because when we're going to search for faith, we can find it in the Scripture. And John will be a narrow path for us to initially investigate and find faith. The second problem that Dora had is the problem we believers have. If you've seen the movie, you might know what I'm talking about. Dora had the memory of a goldfish. 
she could think of things and remember things for about four seconds. And after that, what was I saying? What was I doing? Now, why is that? Because you take a look at the scriptures and it seems that God's people have amnesia. God will do 10 miracles to set them from Egypt and free them that they've been crying out for 400 years. And they cross the Red Sea, which is a pretty neat trick in and of itself. They're led by a pillar of fire and a pillar of smoke. And they're going through and he's giving them manna and he's giving them water. And what do they say? We should go back to Egypt. We're going to die. They don't remember who God is and does. They have amnesia. And so I understand because the scripture tells us about how if you cast out seed, if certain whatever, that the Satan will come and try to gobble it up. So what we need to do is not what people say is like, well, I read the Bible once. Because we have amnesia. We have a goldfish memory. So we need to read the scriptures over and over and over. So that our goldfish memory will sustain us. The second movie I want to talk about, totally different, Saving Private Life. Now, the, it was a tr- based on a true story that basically Private Ryan was a member of a number of sons who all of his other brothers died during the war. And the government and the Defense Department felt that it was unfair to ask their, that family to risk the loss of another child, their last child. And so they sent a platoon of men to find Private Ryan. Now, the problem with this is it wasn't like, we said, okay, we're going to go on a day trip, and we're going to go to Los Angeles, and we're going to try to find him. No, they're in the middle of a war, in the middle of a combat zone. And what they have is his name and rank, Private Ryan, and an approximate place where his unit is. But they have to have extreme risk to save him. And they're in danger, risking their lives to save Private Ryan. Now, I'm going to tell you, as we search for and find faith, it's a dangerous trip. Because there are those who don't want us to find it. First of all, our enemy, Satan and his follower. Our culture doesn't want us to find it. Oftentimes, sometimes our own family don't want us to find it. Because then if we find it and we change, all of a sudden they need to change. So it's a da- they don't want us. And so they will ridicule us. They will cast us aside. They will not talk. To- they will do a number of things to prevent us from finding it. But the difference between the movie Saving Private Ryan and us is that they are going to save Private Ryan. We're going to find faith to save us. The journey is not to save somebody else. The journey is to save us. Because we are in need of faith that shows us our grace. And so that is going to be the journey that we're going to take through the Gospel of John. But I'm not going to go to John yet. I'm going to go to Hebrews. Because we need to know what we're looking for. In Finding Nemo, Dora knew her friend. She knew what, I'm sorry, I I messed up. Dory, okay. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. Okay, and I'm an old guy and I don't remember things. And so Dory, yeah, you're right. So Dory knew what her friend, at least I got the title of the character right, Nemo, knew what he looked like. And so she could find him with all the other fish. Saving Private Ryan, they knew his title, rank, and name, and whatever, and so they could find him. The problem with current Christianity is nobody defines faith properly. You see, you will hear in music and in a lot of churches, if you just believe for it, it'll happen. 
You just believe hard enough, it will happen. That's not belief. That's assumption. I can believe as hard as I want that I'm 25 years old and I look better than Brad Pitt or George Clooney on their best day. The reality is I won't no matter how much I believe because I'm a lot older than 25. And I want to say my the best days are behind me because some of my pictures as a young man, I think I look a little better now, but I don't look like Brad Pitt or George Clooney on their best day. But I will believe because God said so that there will come a time that I will bear in the image of Christ. Not that I have to believe hard enough, I just have to believe him. And that's different. So in Hebrews, it tells us, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. You see, it is what we're hoping because God says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to promise this. So when Abraham, who was Abram at the time, was told that he would have children, that if you could count the number of stars in the sky, that would be his descendants, and didn't have a single kid, he believed God. He believed God because God said so, not because he was hoping hard enough before God said so. So it's this assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things. It's not, I hope, I hope, I hope. He is convinced because God has said so. For by it, men of, of old gain approval. And so this has always been God's plan for us to respond in faith. And faith is not assumption. Faith is responding to the word of God. By faith, we understand that the world were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So again, faith says, why is it that we believe that when God spoke the world and the universe come into existence? Because Genesis says so. Now I know that there are scientists and whatever say that it took billions of years for all this to happen. There is evidence that God's word is correct and they're wrong. But I'm going to believe God because he was there. And so by faith, because God said, I made everything, even out of nothing, the fancy word is ex nihilo. Didn't know I threw Latin in for you. Ex nihilo. God made it out of nothing because he said so. But here's and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. How many times have you, well, if there is a God, if there is a God, then you're not believing there is a God. So there's a two prong. You must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So here's the great thing on our quest and our desire to find faith and to increase it and to commit to it and keep it. God will reward you for the effort. So we're now going to go to the reason I decided to use John. And that is this. Therefore, this is found in John chapter 20, almost at the very end of his gospel. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. We are told in other writings that they said that if they were able to write everything down that Jesus said and did, the libraries couldn't hold it. Jesus was on this world for about 33 and a half years. He publicly had ministry of about 33 and a half years. He also existed before. 
he said a lot of stuff and did a lot of stuff that aren't recorded. Matthew and Mark and Luke have some things that John doesn't have, and, and that's why they're called the synaptic gospels. A lot of what they have has similar. John goes entirely and, and gives us some new and different details. So, therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. You see, John tells us at the end why he wrote the gospel. He wants us to believe. He wants us to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And by believing that, we will then have life, eternal life in his name. You see, our journey is not like a treasure hunt to say, well, you know, and then at the end you go, okay, now I have a gift for a, a white elephant gift. Who cares? This journey, this finding faith has value. It's called eternal life. It's called assurance when things are difficult and it seems that you are going to be undone. The word of God tells us that nothing separates us from, the, from his love. We believe that because he said so. If he didn't say it, it would be assumption. So John's saying, I'm writing this book that you might believe who Jesus is. And that is, if you will, the beginning of faith. We must know who the Son of God is. And we're going to go through John. And we're going to take a look at just who Jesus is. Just what other people said about him. Just what Jesus said about him. What Jesus did and didn't do. So that we might hopefully come to the conclusion that John wants us to, that we believe that Jesus didn't just live, that Jesus wasn't just a good teacher, that he just wasn't a prophet, but that he was and is the Son of God. I hope you come on this journey with me, with eagerness, that you don't wait until I read the next verses in this John. But you should search the other gospel. And you search the Old Testament. And you search the writings of Paul and Peter and of the writer of Hebrews to see who Jesus is. And come to faith. And so this journey that I'm proposing, everyone can come. If you're not a believer, I hope you come with me. If you're a backslider, I hope you come with me. If you are one who is just barely holding on to your faith, I hope you come with me. And if you're one who is strong in the Lord, and you have a faith greater than a mustard seed, you'll come along with me. So that we will have that faith. So that if we are alive, or if our children or grandchildren or great-great-grandchildren or whoever, when Jesus returns, the answer to his question, will the Son of Man find faith on the earth? The answer will be, yes, Lord. Here I am. And all God's people say,